Holy it worked. I can't believe it. Okay, I switched VNA so this would be a little bit easier for folks to see. And let's just talk a little bit about what we're seeing on this plot. Now, what I wanted to do with this project was build a two meter low pass filter. And so that would mean that there would be a certain cutoff frequency. Everything below that would pass, everything above that would be attenuated. And I was targeting the transmit frequency at 146520 because of the number of data points in this. I have a marker sitting at 146.550, and that's as close as I could get. And I'm at negative 1.2 dB of insertion loss. So the filter's not exactly right, but it's pretty dang close. Um, I would rather have this be zero insertion loss, but this is the best that I could do. And uh, we'll talk about how I constructed the filter because it was a difficult job. And for the roll-off frequency, which is typically 3 dB down, and so you would, let me move this down, you would say that negative 3 dB down would be right around, let's see, this is taking forever and I apologize, right around here at 160.05. So according to the specification in the design thing that I did, it was 162.000. So again, it's a little bit off. But seeing that we were at, um, at uh, one point uh, something or other, so we really are going to look around 4 dB, which is right about here, which is 166, 1.20. So this would be 3 dB down from our target frequency of 14652, which was about a dB and a half down already. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this because we're going to use this filter for harmonic suppression on a dirty radio. And so if you take 14652, let's just call it 150 megahertz, double that. The first harmonic that we see is going to be around 300 megahertz. And if I come down here, that's actually at 31 dB down, which is fantastic. So it should suppress the harmonics and that would meet the design spec of what I wanted to accomplish. All right, let's take a look at the filter itself. I know we said we're going to talk a look, take a look at the filter, but here we are. And what I did is I just extended this up to a thousand. So it would get our third and fourth harmonics as well. And then you can see based off of this line, we're below 10 dB of um, attenuation, which should be enough to get the spurious emissions in check and be, and be legal. But uh, after we have our roll off, you can see that skirt's pretty steep. Then we start to climb back up. So let's go ahead and, uh, and, and take a look at the, the filter now. So here's the circuit that we built, and this is on a Nano VNA test board kit. And I think I've done other filters on this board. It's really nice for prototyping, and makes things super handy. But uh, if you take a look at it, you have an input here, and then you have an output here, and then you can feed your signal through whatever circuit that you want to put in there. Now, these little holes are all connected in goofy patterns, and you have to know what those patterns are to be able to build your circuit. But this is just a very simple Pi network. And so we come in and we have a capacitor shunt to ground and then in series we have an inductor and this is an ugly inductor, but don't laugh. It kind of works. And then uh, we have another capacitor shunt to ground. And uh, when I went to build this, I didn't have the exact value for the capacitor. So I have these capacitor kits here that I use and it was calling for 20 picofarad capacitors that uh, you would use as these shunts. And the closest I had was 22 picofarads. And when I started to measure these on my meter, they were coming out at 17 picofarads. So I found two that were 18, and uh, that's what I used here, two 18 picofarad capacitors. Uh, so I knew I was going to be off a little bit, but I was hoping it wasn't going to be that much. And then the next thing I needed to do is get the inductor. Now the inductor is super duper low inductance. And what I did is I just started rolling coils and I was, you know, adding windings and taking windings off. But because the inductance is so low, I had trouble measuring that as well. Um, so what I did is I just put one on there and I added wraps and removed wraps until I got the, the curve to look right on the trace. And then uh, I spread these out a little bit because compressing or expanding the coil will change the inductance value. And that's how we got to what we got. So here's the website that I used, and I'll have a link to this below in order to design the filter. Um, and when you come over here and you take a look at it, what I did over here is I put in for a low pass filter, Chevy Chev designed. And the reason I did this is I believe these have less ripple at the top. 
Um, there's other filter types that you can use and you can play around with. And then for the topology, you can pick shunt first or series first. And I pick shunt first, so it would be a pi network. If I pick series first, it would be a T network. So we went with shunt first. And then you can pick the number of components that you want. Because the nano VNA test board is so small, I just picked a third order. And then I think I mentioned earlier, I set my cutoff frequency to 162 megahertz. Passband ripple at 0.1 dB. Uh, output impedance that we expect is 50 ohms, and input impedance we expect is 50 ohms. Who knows what it is on the test radio that we're using, which is the talk pod. I think it's the A31 or A32 or something like that. I don't know. But it's, it's not even worth mentioning the name of the radio. Um, and then I took these component values and I picked standards. And I didn't have any of the standard components. So I had to make my own inductor and then um, get close with the capacitors. But here is the blue line, which is the expected um, roll-off frequency. So here's your flat line. Right around here is 146.2 or 52, which is the frequency that I was targeting for doing the testing. And you can see it's 0.185 of a dB, and ours was like 1.8, somewhere right around there. And then uh, you can see the roll-off over here at around the 3 dB mark is close to uh, 200 megahertz. So I think our, our curve is similar to this. It looks a little steeper in ours, but that is probably because the unknown value of my inductor and we we're close with the capacitors. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set this up in line with the radio and the spectrum analyzer, and we're gonna see if it suppresses the harmonics. Okay, so here's how we're going to test the filter when it's in line. So we have our radio, and this is a notoriously dirty radio. And we're going to run two tests. We're going to test it one without the filter and then one with the filter. But I wanted to show you how the filter configuration is going to work. So we have the signal coming out of the radio and through a 40 dB attenuator. And this attenuator is good up to 10 watts. And then we have the signal going into our filter. And then it's going to come around this cable and it's going to go into our tiny SA. And then we'll be able to measure spectral purity on this. I'll hook this up to the computer so you all can see what it looks like uh, a little bit better and not have to look at this little teeny screen. And a couple things I wanted to mention. The first test we're going to do is without this board in line. So we'll get a baseline of the harmonics of the radio. Then we're going to put the filter in line and see what the difference is between the two and if the filter worked in cleaning up the signal on the talk pod. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention is, is that the size of this filter would not connect directly to the radio. So if you wanted to use this in the real world, one, it's fragile. So you, you'd have to put this in a case or something like that. And the other one is, is that if you try to connect it, this button or this knob is going to be in the way. But if this works, uh, what we could do is we could potentially build another filter on a longer PCB, maybe put it in a case. I don't know if I'm going to do all that because this radio is pretty crappy and I'm not really interested in, in using it anyway. This is all kind of like theoretical testing and stuff like that that I wanted to do. So let's get this connected to the computer and then we'll do the test without the filter and see what we have. Okay, we have the radio set up, and then here you can see we do not have the filter in line. And we're going to configure our tiny SA to make sure that it's ready for the test. So here we go. I want to go into the menu, and the first thing I want to do is I want to pick measure. So I pick that, and I pick harmonic. And the harmonic that we want to measure is 146.52 megahertz. So we've gone ahead and we've set that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here, and we're going to go into level. And when I pick that, I want to pick external gain, and then I'm going to pick negative 40, and that's going to account for my attenuator. Okay, after we do that, we want to come back in here, and then we want to go into display. And when I pick display, I want to pick draw line. And we're going to do a line at negative 16.02 times 1, and that's going to put a blue line across the screen. You can see that blue line. So when we do a harmonics test, any spurious emissions or harmonics need to be 40 dB below the fundamental. The fundamental is the frequency that we're transmitting on. They also need to be below that blue line, which is represented in the code or in the FCC rules as um, 25 microwatts. 25 microwatts, if you do the math, equals negative 16.02 dBm. So that's why we have that line there. And one of the things I want to do is I want to go back and then I want to go into level and I want to look at attenuate and make sure that it is set to auto and it is. 
So we're good to go. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to key up the radio. It's going to take a couple seconds to sort itself out, and then we want to see what our final readings are. Okay, and it should have settled itself out by now. And what we can see is that this thing is not clean by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, none of the harmonics are 40 dB down from the primary or from the fundamental, and none of them are below the blue line. So what I want to do now is I'm actually going to go in here, and I'm going to go to uh, Trace, and then we are going to freeze the Trace. So now when I unkey, everything should stay fine. And what we've done is we froze that reading. Now, another thing I want to do is I want to go copy trace, and I'm going to copy the trace to another trace on the Tiny SA. This is the Tiny SA Ultra. And we're just going to copy it to trace three. And what I want to do now, so you can see that the color has changed a little bit here. We are going to unfreeze trace one. And then we should be able to see the purple or the cyan. I don't know what color that is, but that is the measurements that we took and we froze and we copied to another trace. So I'm going to go back to my radio. Let's just go back here real quick. And you can see that it's on 14652. If I hold it right there, let's go to 147, uh, 800. Well, I did 888 and it doesn't really matter too much what we did. The reason I wanted to do this is I wanted to move the frequency over just a little bit so we should be able to compare the original readings to the new readings. But let me go ahead and get the, atten uh, the attenuator or the low pass filter in place. Okay, so here you, should, you can see that we have the filter in place. And then what I'm going to do with the radio is I'm going to key it up. And we should start getting our readings and we have to let everything settle itself out. Okay, we are done. It settled itself out. So I'm going to go in here and then I'm going to freeze this trace. That way I can unkey and we can take a look at what, uh, what data we collected. So when you take a look at it, number one uh, is close to where it was before. So we did have about 1.2 dBm of attenuation on our fundamental just based off of the filter design. But if you take a look at marker number two, that's down significantly from where it was before. So we were probably around 23, 25 dBm, and now we are probably somewhere, it says we are negative 35 dBc. So that's good, but it's 35 dBc down from the fundamental. That's still not good enough to pass. So the filter did not entirely clean up that, uh, that harmonic. Now you can see we had one where marker three would be, but there's no marker three here because we've been able to get rid of that one. And then when we look at uh, marker number four, that one is 44 dB down, which would be a passing mark for that harmonic. Um, and it's also below the blue line. So our filter worked pretty well. It didn't quite get the, um, the first harmonic or the second harmonic on uh, marker number two and didn't take that one out all the way. So I guess I could have to go back to the drawing board. What I could do is adjust it to have a steeper roll off and uh, maybe that would work a little bit better. But uh, that's really it. Uh, fun project. It was something that was educational and uh, it was fun for me to do because I'm a nerd and I like to do this kind of stuff. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.